Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and to the Medical Monday series. If you're new here, my name is Ali and I'm a junior doctor working in Cambridge and this is video number two in a mini series about preparing for the AFP, the Academic Foundation Programme. This video is really, really niche. So if you're not a fifth or sixth year medical student in the UK, you probably won't gain much by watching this video. It's full of jargon and it's just pitched at kind of that, that level. So if you're applying to medicine and you're watching this video, you might find it vaguely entertaining seeing us use all this jargon and kind of see what your life might be like six years down the line, but objectively you're not gonna gain much uh, educational value from it. If you are a fifth or a sixth year medical student and you're thinking of applying to the AFP or you've applied for the AFP and you've got an interview, then hopefully this video is gonna be really useful because a few months ago, I interviewed a friend of mine, Mr. Ankur Kajuria. Uh, he is a boss. He's done an AFP, uh, he's written a book about the AFP, he runs a course about the AFP. And in this video, we're talking about how to prepare for the clinical emergency station. So now we're gonna cut to me and Ankur from about six months ago talking about this, and I hope you find it useful. My understanding of the interviews, mm. uh, so I had an interview in London and an yep. interview in EBH. Mm. The EBH interview was very sort of personal based, you know, ask questions about your application, about white space questions, why do you want to do the AFP, that sort of thing. Whereas in London there were two stations, one of them was a critical appraisal station mm -hmm. where we got an abstract to look at for half an hour in advance yep. um, and we had to critique the abstract. And the second was the clinical emergencies where we got like a little scenario saying that you're, you're the FY1 in A&E, there's this patient, this patient and this patient how would you how would you proceed and we was like a discussion with the consultants about about this and that um so can you start by giving us some tips about the clinical emergency station yeah how absolutely does one go about that absolutely um so first thing i will say that uh uh, going for the afp will be a really good stepping stone towards finals preparation um it it gets you going in terms of uh, getting into that mindset of how to present in um in a viral scenario, um, um, I don't know how different medical schools do their examinations, but certainly I went to Imperial and our uh, finals examination was very much in line with uh, some of the techniques that I used to prepare for the AFP. Um, so in terms of presentation, in terms of structuring your answers. So, okay. you know, what is the cause of chest pain, for example? So you can divide it into central and peripheral. Uh, you can have cardiac causes, um, pulmonary causes. So um, just structuring your answers um, gives you more credibility in, in the interview. It shows the examiner that you have a way of um, uh, structuring your answers. And actually, when you start working as an FY1, that uh, you're not going to just have a scrambled mind when you are presented with one of these scenarios that you can actually comp compartmentalize. So in the clinical emergency station, the way yep. it's usually structured is that it's some, some kind yep. of emergency and you've got to do A, B, C, D, E standard. So generally you will get, um, they will give you a couple of scenarios um, and they will generally get you to prioritize. Um, so you'll have uh, generally one or two patients who are quite unwell and uh, one patient who is not unwell as such, but uh, may have an angry relative or something like that to mm. test your communication skills. Um, and the first thing that you need to do is to justify uh, which patient you would see first um, and why. Okay. Now there are two ways of doing it. Um, you can um, say to the examiner, look, um, um, firstly, we're never going to be on our own there's always people around, so we have, and this is where you can mention that you've actually been in hospital and you know what the structure of the team is like. So you can refer to your senior house officer or the registrar and you can say that I would want to see X patient first, however, I know that this other patient could also become quite unwell and I would escalate and let my registrar know that there are potentially two unwell patients and that I'm going to see this patient and uh, that someone else needs to see this other patient. So you're basically safe. Safety is absolute priority so uh, your first priority is to be safe um, and that should come across in the interview because people hiring you uh, want to know that, uh, especially for the AFP, you need to be clinically sound, okay? Uh, no one's going to uh, take on an academic mm. who is clinically not sound because you're gonna have four fewer months uh, to do um, research work. So four fewer clinical months and you need to get your competencies up. And if you're already struggling, uh, which will come across in the interview, if you're not um, sure about the clinical management of patients, then it's not really a good idea for you to enter okay. an integrated pathway, academic pathway, so I would say. Safety is obviously the most important thing. And actually on the, on the London feedback sheet that we got afterwards, there was a mark 
uh, you know, like good satisfactory excellent for awareness of the team structure. So that's yeah. the thing you're saying, you know, knowing Absolutely. that you have a registrar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, because a lot of people can do the book work, yeah. but actually uh, they want to know whether people have actually been in and seen what the team uh, dynamic is like and how you actually manage patients. Okay. So in terms of in terms of preparing for this clinical yep. emergency, it's, it's obviously there's no substitute for having been in A and E in recess yep. while this yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. is happening. Um, what other sort of sort of things can we do more like on the book work side or sure. practicing with friends to sure, sure, sure. Kind of brush up on this? So uh, the key to the uh, clinical emergency uh, or just any clinical station mm. anywhere is to have a very systematic A to E assessment yeah. of a patient, and which is actually what you do. Uh, and when I was on FY one, uh, this is what I did for every single patient, and um, I had uh, ingrained this in my mind so well that whenever I saw a patient, I would follow this checklist that I developed in my head. Um, and actually, if you, sorry for the plug, but uh, actually, if you get this book, um, I've uh, detailed verbatim exactly what I would say in an interview for the full A to E, okay? And uh, with some tips uh, in terms of why you're saying that stuff. Um, so in terms of an A to E assessment, you wanna be short, snappy, and uh, tell the examiner, look, you know what you're talking about. The key to these interviews is to um, tell the examiner that uh, you have a structure in terms of how you approach patients and carry on talking and be confident. Um, I joke, but um, uh, in my interview, I spoke for eight minutes flat. Oh, well, okay. In a 10 minute station. Yeah. Um, and actually, I was so confident in what I was saying that I was covering all the questions that they would have asked oh, me okay. anyway. Yeah. Okay. So in the uh, in the end, they did ask me a few questions, but uh, by then I pretty much covered everything that was on their sheet. Okay. And you can actually do that very simply by having a systematic A to E. Okay. Which I'm happy to talk about. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Cool. So we'll, I think we'll leave that leave it at that for now. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you get the book, or you know, you don't have to buy it. You can ask your like clinical clinical school yeah. library to buy it for you. It's like no big deal at all. Yeah. There's also loads of stuff on the internet, you know, ATE assessments. I think like the ATLS have like, you know, example questions on their thing and that's quite yeah. si similar to. Uh, you're unlikely to get ATLS scenarios yeah. in the in the uh, interview itself, but I have included some sections in the book um, if you do want to refer to those. Um, and uh, there are then other emergencies that you should know about. And again, I've briefly touched on those. So things like you should know the doses of uh, um, adrenaline that you're going to administer to a patient with anaphylaxis and that's not just for the interview and it looks great in the interview if you can just come up with the doses yeah. and um, you know you know them uh, but actually also uh, as a as a junior doctor as an FY1 it is uh, absolutely paramount that for those emergencies that you just know the doses um, um, I can give you an anecdote oh yeah um, <laughs> so I was um, uh, an FY1 I was uh, um, with one of my uh, SHOs who had gone and seen a patient, so I was sitting uh, by myself, and one of the nurses came to me and said, uh, Doctor, I'm not really happy with this patient uh, who's having an iron transfusion, uh, and the, the lips have kind of swollen up a little bit, mm. and uh, the systolic is reading 70, I'm not really mm. happy. Mm. Um, and at that point, I was like, okay, my uh, game face on A2E assessment, and this patient's having a full-blown anaphylactic reaction. Uh, so I brought the crash trolley around and um, I did a systematic A2E very quickly. I administered the, the uh, adrenaline, the chlorophenamine, uh, and the hydrocortisone. And, um, and this is something you can do as an FY1. It doesn't matter if you're a consultant or you're an FY1 these principles, the A2E assessment, and uh, knowing the doses, it's absolutely paramount. Um, so not just for the interview, but for life. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so yeah, uh, that's the clinical emergency station. It's all about having a structured approach, A, B, C, D, E, um, and kind of knowing, It's uh, as you said, it's useful to know kind of on your fingertips mm. the management of important things like sepsis, anaphylaxis. Yeah. You know, if you can bust out GI bleed, you know, if you, if you know if you know exactly what to do for that, it, yeah. it looks quite impressive. And include evidence base into your answers. So for uh, GI bleeds, there's the Blatchford and Rockall scores, mm. and that just shows that you're already um, academically inclined and that you're using evidence base to inform your clinical practice, which comes across really well. 
and uh, in terms of sort of resources that some friends of mine found useful, the ones who actually got into AFP, they said the uh, Oxford Handbook for the Foundation Program yeah. is really good in terms of like in management of emergencies yeah. because it like fully emphasizes A B C D E, call a senior, <laughs> you know, all, yeah. all the stuff, and then gives you you know the exact doses that you need. Yeah. There are two sources. So one is that book and the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine. Uh, just the emergency section. If you just memorize that section. Uh, use the foundation book and uh, have a structure in terms of and practice practice is absolutely key people underestimate um, how important that is so uh, you know before a month or two months before my interview I was practicing in front of the mirror I was recording myself uh, constantly playing back and so that when I went into the interview that A to E I was just on autopilot it was just coming out I wasn't even thinking oh. what I was saying okay and you need to be at that stage I yeah. would say, if yeah. you want to do if you if you want it to go smoothly and comfortably. That, that makes sense. I certainly wasn't, wasn't at that stage. But, but, but now I know for my next interview that, you know, I want to be practicing in front of the mirror, practicing in front of the camera. That's right. And doing all that. So that's the clinical station. Mm. Can we now talk about the critical appraisal station? All right. So that is how you prepare for the clinical emergency station. There's going to be links in the description to all the stuff we talked about, including Ankur's course and his book. It's pretty good might as well. Also links to the Oxford Handbook for the Foundation Program and the Oxford Handbook for Clinical Medicine. Uh, those will be Amazon affiliate links. So if you haven't bought them yet and you want to buy them, please can you click on that link because then I make about 50p for each one you buy and that's, you know, helps me out, helps me buy a fifth of a cup of coffee from Costa. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Um, there's going to be a few more videos about preparing for the AFP and because I'm a doctor now and a kind of YouTuber as well, I make videos about life of a junior doctor. So you might like those. But yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.